Okay, this is part five on my five-part series on the release. And this has to do with the most important reason why a natural gradual release is important for your golf game and not necessarily making one big drive to impress your friends the um, focal point of your entire game. Now, I am a proponent that you want to have a similar golf swing to whether it's chipping, wedges, five irons, and driver. People are going to say, well, they're different clubs, you hit up on drivers, you hit down on wedges more. That's true, but I am a firm believer that your chipping and your pitching should just be your mini golf swing. And especially if you don't have the seven or eight hours a day to practice different swings and different shots, you want to keep things as consistent as possible. If your swings are a little bit different, fine, but you don't want to have two completely and opposite moves to hit a driver or to hit a wedge or a chip. So, for those that say that create most power, you know, get some extension, even float load it, and then just get that lag and get that narrow, you know, swing, get it wide on the way back and then lagged and narrow on the way through, that creates power, that creates leverage, blah, 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 blah. Okay, again, I don't argue with the physics, I don't argue with the math. There, there is a way to create one bomb of a drive. The furthest drive you are capable of hitting will probably be done that way. I know that's how I used to do it. But what we're looking for is not only consistency with the distance on the driver, but consistency through the whole bag from a drive all the way down to a little 15 or 20 yard chip. And the best way to do that is to have this release that I'm talking about and to have a, 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 a maintain the width of your swing. If you make it too wide going back and don't set your hands, my question to you is, is let's say I want to hit this ball 30 yards, okay, or 50 yards, okay? If I was going to hit a 30 to 50 yard shot, let's say 50, a 50 yard shot, I would take it back to about right there. Now, if my hands are almost set, it's going to be really easy to just make a nice release and a nice fluid swing through. If I'm extending the arc, widening the arc and float loading and lagging on the way down to get maximum power with driver, this is what it's going to look like if you try to hit a 50 yard wedge that way. Okay, not only did this divot go out in that direction, way to the right, that really hurt my right wrist because I really was like digging that thing into the ground. So I'm going to try that again with keeping the arc constant and just having a nice, natural, gradual release. See? Nice shallow divot. I barely took any grass. I'm going to be able to control the trajectory, the spin, and it didn't hurt my wrist and it was nice and fluid, and I was able to control the speed of my turn. Whereas when I did the widening of the arc, float load, lag, the speed of the turn was inconsistent and choppy, and the rhythm wasn't very good. So that, again, it's, you want consistency. And consistency is gonna be built through having a similar release, similar swing, similar mechanics throughout the bag. So that was like a 50 yard wedge shot, let's say a little chip, a little 15 or 20 yard, you know, little chip pitch. If, if my muscle memory was to, like I said, extend the arc, keep those hands on set, and then lag and narrow on the way down, okay, that went way farther than the 15 or 20 yards I wanted to hit it. Again, I dug it pretty deep. The ball came out low and hot with no trajectory, no spin control, and I hit it way further than I wanted to. Whereas if I just simplify it and allow my, again, I'm repetitive, allow the arc to be constant, allow the hands to do what they kind of want to and set the club, and then a nice release, 
you'll see that the rhythm and the tempo, same word, it's kind of the same thing, but the smoothness, I know I don't like saying smooth when it comes to hitting driver, but it's just, overall, it's just less stressful, not only on the body, but on the golf ball. You don't want violence on a little soft pitch, okay? And this creates a lot of violence. So it's just, okay? I hit that one the 15 or the 20 yards I wanted to. And again, detractors will say, oh, you're exaggerating to prove your point. Well, that's kind of true, but I've seen that kind of violence on people who overlag the club on their chipping and their pitching. And if you go in between the L wedge, 50 and 15 yard shots I'm hitting here in the driver, it's so much easier to control your trajectory on your five iron if you're trying to keep one out of the wind or punch it out of the trees. It's much easier to control that trajectory when you're going from here to there versus here to there to there, okay? Even in slow motion and even with a slight exaggeration, you can see that that is not a consistent controlled move. And with the irons and especially in the wedges and the chipping, being able to control the trajectory, being able to control the spin, and being able to control the speed of your turn is how you're gonna be consistent and accurate with those shots.